Hello everyone, in this video I would like to discuss the digital to analog converter filter controversy going on between Audio Science Review and Golden Sound from Headphones Show, as well as just more elaboration on the high-res content in general. Before that, I would like to make a quick announcement that the old Discord server Avalaf Sound was deleted. We have a new Discord server, it's linked in the description, be sure to join it. Anyway, I made a video like a year ago or so talking about high-res audio, and I was re-watching this video last night, um, just kind of like reminded of it based on the current topic of discussion, and realized that this is probably the best video on high-res audio to date. I will link this in the, in the description as well. Be sure to go watch it because everything I said in that video is true regarding this current situation. So I was able to ABX these two files where the difference only really occurs above 20 kilohertz with like minus 85, 90 dB. And if you look at like treble extension, for example, of the Odyssey LCD5 with my EQ versus the, say, Sennheiser HD 650, you can see at around 20 kilohertz on the BNK5128, the LCD5 has significantly higher extension. And if you probably assume past that even further, like around 21 kilohertz, the LCD5 will have better extension than the HD 650. And if you watch this video of mine, from a year ago that I linked in the description, you can see that I talked about digital filters and why I advocate setting the sample rate of your system to 48 kilohertz or above. This is because DAC filters are typically not flawless, meaning that you will often get roll off before the stop band frequency. The stop band frequency is one half of the sample rate of the file. It is also known as the Nyquist frequency. The stop band frequency can be adjusted depending on filter goals and like, you know, computation processing power desires. But essentially you can have a theoretically perfect filter for 44.1 kilohertz music. Okay, so just to explain, a perfect filter for 44.1 kilohertz music would be flat to just before 22.05 kilohertz. So approaching the limit of 22.05 kilohertz. And from there, you would want to have a stop band going to negative infinity at 22.05 kilohertz. So achieving this is not really worth doing in a DAC because there are other solutions. For example, if you're using core audio on Mac OS, anything that goes into this pipeline is converted into 32-bit float where modifications can be done. You can adjust the volume, like lower the volume. You can lower the volume without, or while lowering the noise floor of the file as well. And if you're, this is like, I don't know how many people in my like um, general YouTube community care about the weeds of this stuff that much, but that's kind of like what the po point of this video is. So you have, like for example, a 16-bit file and you put it into a 32-bit float container, you can modify this file any way you want because the 32-bit float has like 1,500 dB of dynamic range, something like that. So you have so much headroom. And if you look at the core audio resampling algorithm, no distortion occurs above minus 140 dB. And this is from over 10 years ago. So I'm assuming it's going to be better than that now, but so let's say you're listening to a 44.1 kilohertz file, right? And your DAC filter only extends to like 20 kilohertz and starts slowly rolling off, similar to what the normal filter is that Golden Sun showed in the video. There will be inaccuracies above 20 kilohertz naturally because you're rolling off before the Nyquist frequency. And it's said that you can only hear to 20 kilohertz but I have proven in other tests, like for example, on the, if you go to audiocheck.net, you can use a 20 kilohertz versus full range blind test with white noise. And I can hear the difference in that, have passed that test several times. But also another thing to consider is the program material used by Golden Sound. I can understand a lot of people's skepticism if they didn't actually listen to the file. But if you listen to the file there, you know, you talk about auditory masking. With white noise, you have the full spectrum playing at the same decibel level. Not per octave, but just generally each frequency is kind of like at the same level. And let's say in a file you have it such that you, you can have like some bass, but then you have around 20 kilohertz, you have a, a lot of energy. You're not getting any masking from mid-range frequencies necessarily going to go into the 20 kilohertz region. So you can 
manipulate a file in such a way such that frequencies around 20 kHz are more audible than they would be with a white noise test, for example. And not to say that this test was easy, it was definitely extremely hard for me. Like I, I had to sit for a while, you know, just to get 99.9% .9 confidence interval, but also at, off of um, recording, I got 99.9% .9 confidence interval. I was pretty tired at this point though, and you can see that my percentage wasn't that great, but the confidence interval is what matters most at the end of the day. Anyway, so let's say you have a 44.1 kilohertz file with a 20 kilohertz, with a file that is, um, with a filter that is flat to 20 kilohertz, meaning the pass band is 20 kilohertz, and then it stop bands at 44.1 kilohertz, no, at 22.05 kilohertz at, let's say, minus 100 dB or whatever. And like I mentioned earlier, you're getting inaccuracies above 20 kilohertz. So what do you do in this situation? Well, one thing you can do is simply resample the audio on your operating system to 48 kilohertz or higher. So what this would do is it would extend the stop band frequency to 24 kilohertz, but it would also make it such that the DAC filter is flat to at least around 22 kilohertz. And hopefully you see what I'm getting at here. It's not necessarily that the, like I've, I've it's pretty obvious, you know, frequency response can make a difference. And I've talked about this in the past. So Golden Sound's results are new in the sense that I wasn't like sure if this is technically possible. Now it is, but it doesn't really change the criteria of, you know, measurably transparent DACs are inaudible from one another. And I've also, again, advocated to set your audio output to 40 kilohertz at least, just so you prevent any inaccuracies and in filters from being audible, just in case, you know, it's a good measure. And although, like, I was able to hear a difference, like, it's like, like such a minute difference that you can possibly hear. And honestly, like if you were to just play these like, you know, noises above 20 kilohertz, like when I'm like not doing anything, I really don't think I would be able to detect them. I feel like something is going on such that these noises coupled with the lower frequency noises can somehow alter the total sound energy in a way. Like, I've talked about in the past of, you know, unlocking DLC ears. This is probably a DLC ears level two test. It's quite difficult. Not to say that Golden Sound has DLC ears. Any test he can pass, I can probably pass. But essentially, you're trying to listen to the ones and zeros itself when I know you're converting the binary audio data to analog at the end of the day, but you have to be able to listen really deep into the recording such that your mind can process all that's going on. Yes, this kind of does have to do with hearing, but not really. Even if your hearing is probably not that great, you can still activate this ability and use the most of what you can. Because I even saw like someone that was 57 pass this test with 10 out of 10. But like, yeah, so you need to like, in your mind, better be able to process analog audio and this is something that takes significant time and commitment. It's not something you can just immediately do. You have to do like thousands of blind tests probably, but I'm sure to some it'll come easier than others. And this isn't to really say that DACs matter a lot because again, I have given this criteria in the past where it is theoretically possible to pass a test where there are differences at this region. So my recommendation is not to use HQ player to create a computationally intensive filter or get a core DAC. It's simply to use a DAC such as like any of these ESS DACs. Use the filter that is flat to at least 20 kilohertz, but it's typically going to be flat to like 21 kilohertz, but stop bands at 24 kilohertz. The thing is, even if you use this filter versus the 22 kilohertz filter, it doesn't really 22.05 kilohertz stop band filter doesn't really matter as long as you resample to a higher frequency. But, you know, regardless, you either pick one of these filters, at least flat to 20 kilohertz stop band at around 22.05 kilohertz or 24 kilohertz, and you resample your audio to 48 kilohertz or higher. And as long as your resampling algorithm is good, the pipeline is good, such as Apple's core audio, you're not going to get any audible loss. And, you know, people talk about bit perfect and stuff, but if you use EQ, you're inherently resampling your audio where it's not 
bit perfect anyway, using digital EQ that is on software. So yeah, I definitely do not recommend going out and buying a chord deck or anything of that sort. There's nothing really too novel, but I will admit that it is interesting what Golden Sound, the test he did, and you know, being able to confirm that this difference is audible and it kind of, if anything, reinforces my notion to, or my recommendation to set your audio output to at least 48 kilohertz. That is if you're not using a perfect filter like the one created in an HQ player, which again, you're getting like negatives such as latency and you have to use it only through HQ player. Whereas, you know, to get the same audible result, you could use a worse DAC filter, but just upsample the, or resample the audio to a higher frequency such that the filter effects will not be audible. And this is actually very easy to audify or to um, verify. You take a 44.1 kilohertz sample rate file, the natural one that extends to 22.05 kilohertz, and then let's say you resample the audio to 48 kilohertz, no information is actually added to that file above um, 22.05 kilohertz. And if you were to null that um, 44.1 kilohertz file resample to 48 kilohertz versus the original 44.1 kilohertz file, there would be no differences that show up at all, given that the resampling algorithm is good. This has been proven several times. And yeah, so those are my thoughts on the entire situation. Be sure to like and subscribe. Join the Discord server linked in the description.